Hey guys, uh, I'm back with a new stack of comics and I will talk about them. It's, it's a lot of stuff. Um, and the first half of it is DC only. I get so many DC books right now because they're very good. DC is doing a great job uh, with their different lines. Um, but I will start with the mainstream stuff, with the superhero books. First up is Captain Adam number two in a, f I think, five issue miniseries. And um, it's highly enjoyable. Um, I didn't know and still don't know too much about the character. He's, he's a new uh, character for me. I know there was a run in the New 52. I haven't read it. But um, I understand that they're trying to somehow converge everything from his past, from the New 52 into this new rebirthed uh, present and it's a very densely written issue you can see it here it's a lot of story and i love this um, i love when um, of course it's part of a bigger arc but if um, the issue alone on its own um, stand uh, stands as a, as a story with a beginning a middle and an ending and um, it's a time travel travel issue um, our uh, main character travels to the 90s when he's not Captain Atom yet and um, yeah it's great it's a great origin story and um, I enjoyed the the writing and the super detailed and nuanced art uh, very much it's a great book for $2.99 uh, The Fall and Rise of Captain Atom written by um, Carrie Bates and drawn by Greg Wiseman and Will Conrad. Great book. All right, next up, Earth to Society. It's a Dan Abnett um, written book uh, and the art, which is super nice. I, I really liked it. It's not that special, but I think the, the angles and um, the sheer world building that's in it, uh, bam, look at it, is really enjoyable. So, uh, it's the final f uh, fate of Earth 2, um, and I, I, I guess I know now what will happen afterwards. So, they will resolve this Earth 2 because the, the JSA uh, will be reformed, and I think they will be put on, on Earth 2, back on Earth 2. So, um, they have to resolve what happened in between uh, with the, this uh, very different cast of characters um, that... Um, has rebooted their own world. They have rebooted Earth 2 uh, uh, but when they wake up it's all very weird and very different and um, there is a ty tyrannical um, ruling uh, by the ultra humanite and his helpers are a lot. It's, it's an army of Sandmans, the old school Sandman with a gas mask, the Wesley Dot uh, Sandman and um, they find a, a fight against those um, Sandmen and try to overcome the ultra humanite. And it's a fun superhero book. It's just a team book, um, which is fun to read. You don't need to know too much about the characters. I didn't, and I still enjoy it very much. Um, if you like superheroes, this is cool. Next up, another. Two Dan Abnett issues. Uh, so he's writing a lot of for, for DC right now. This is Aquaman, a bi-weekly book I have talked very often about. Um, and I was a little bit torn always. Is it like a great book to recommend to, to readers of, um, of fiction in general? Mm, I'd say it's really a good book for superhero readers and um, the arc, the big overarching uh, story um, told in the first 15 plus one, the rebirth issue, is, is finished here. And it's a great ending, very fulfilling. Um, it's defining where Aquaman stands right now and um, that he's a noble king, um, but he's also a badass. And um, it's, you know, the art, well, I can't say that it's my favorite kind of art and coloring, but I don't care. It's just a fun, fun read. Uh, and then Abnet knows how to, you know, which buttons 
he has to has to push it works out really well this is the um, a new entry point number 16 starts a new story so if you want to sample aquaman uh, get number 16 it's a nice first chapter um well done what can i say then i'm mean, just the man uh, so he's um so enjoyable that i wanted to try another book uh, which is titans um where um you know legend uh, the, the 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 classical titans book is the book where all the sidekicks of the big guys um form their own um superhero group and um as you see i am stumbling quite a bit it's it's not uh some concept that i'm i'm very familiar with and um, i i wouldn't say i was lost but i was just heavily disinterested in uh, what is happening here so if you're not in love with the characters already uh, have special fondness for nightwing and such um this is definitely another book that you have to get so even that abnet can write average stuff um next up deathstroke number 11 um it was talked about online uh, pretty pretty much it's a, it's a controversial story um uh, the great thing about uh, this issue which is a standalone uh, story is that it's written by priest like always but the art maybe you recognize it um is by Dennis Cohen on pencils and Bill Sienkiewicz on inks. Uh, Dennis Cohen was one of the founding fathers of Milestone Comics in the 90s, uh, which was a whole new universe comprised of um, colored superheroes, um, I think mainly black, I'm not sure. Um, and um, it was quite a success. Um, and it's rumored to have a return very soon. Maybe Priest and Cohen are somehow um, testing the ground here if so if this will be the new milestone it will be great um, it's a very political story um, where in, in which the mothers of chicago of victims and the chicago suburbs you know in chicago a lot of people get killed every year i've read i think uh, around 700 people every year are, are getting killed um, in, and the mothers of, of, of victims uh, want to hire Deathstroke for him to clean up the area and um, punish the bad bad guys who are um, also black and he's white. So already this is quite controversial. But um, you know the whole the whole nuance that Priest brings to this story. It's not a preachy story. It's not like look at this it's bad and uh, yeah, we should be all good people and then nothing bad would happen no it's much more complicated than that so if you do politics in comics do it like this and make your readers think about a complex um, situation don't offer too easy solutions um, priest is a great writer he achieved it and uh, this is a very good Introduction also to Deathstroke. It's a one um, standalone story. Very much recommended. Um, next up, Detective Comics number 949. So um, a round number is just around the corner. This is wrapping up the um, introduction to the new Batwoman series, which will, um, I think, start in a few weeks. And um, I told you that. In a previous video that I really enjoy the art, I will show a little bit of the art. It's it's great. It's very stylized, um, great, very defined color palette, and um, it looks very slick. But the story by Tynion and Marguerite Benet is not quite there. I don't know what it is. For me, Batwoman feels um, somehow flat. It's, it's still for me more of a, a vehicle for the name. Uh, the name is Batwoman, it's such a great brand. Um, I know she's an old character, but she's not, you can't really get, 
get close to her. Maybe that's the problem. Uh, I don't I don't feel empathetic towards her. But also I I don't really believe uh, her motivations and everything. Everything feels very much fabricated. Maybe it's just me. I will definitely give the series a shot, the, the ongoing, which starts uh, because I trust the uh, the writers and Steve Epting will be on art. So um, I look forward to that. But this wasn't very convincing. Bad girl number seven. Um, so I already had um, canceled my subscription for Bad Girl because, well, it's a it's a nice series. Don't get me wrong. I think it's just not very much for me. I'm not the, tar the target audience. It's for younger or for younger uh, audience. Maybe um, I have read a too much of those, you know, cool, young, sassy girl characters. Um, I wish there would be like more women characters. I mean, we will get that woman, so that's good. Um, but this bad girl is... Um, dealing with the gentrification issues in uh, Burnside and I was like hmm, really it's it's not that a new that topic is not that new so if you're dealing with it now maybe you're not only a little bit behind but uh, it's just a political uh, rehash of something we know all know it's not very nice and you know the antagonists are very one-dimensional and it's fun, it's fun, it's nice, but I think it's just not for me. Um, next up is Doom Patrol, um, which I really enjoyed reading uh, without having any clue what is going on. Um, I've The last issue, uh, number three, came out, I don't know, two months ago or so. And, you know, the storytelling of Gerard Way is very disjointed, very jumpy. Um, I still enjoy Nick Darrington's art very much, so this helps a lot to keep my um, to keep my focus. But it's really difficult to you know get in the flow with this book. Uh, a lot of people are loving it. I'm I'm not there yet, but I enjoy it, and I definitely need to give it a reread when uh, the first arc is wrapped, which will be like I think in. One or two issues so neutral on doom patrol right now um hyper positive uh on shape the changing girl though so you know young animal um didn't do it for me uh yet in general but change the, Ch the changing girl is just the perfect book for me first up again once again the art i can't I can't stop uh, praising uh, Marty Zarconi and Kelly Fitzpatrick for the beauty of uh, of it. It's it's so nice. You get instantly into the mood, uh, and for me, this is this is enough. Look at this; it's so dreamy. Uh, so, if you're a dreamy person, if you enjoy like getting into a world and experience it and hang around. Um, and if you like nuanced psychology and uh, weird, weird, weird concepts, um, this is really the book for you. And if you're more into conflict and plot, something is coming up. The last page is hinting at um, some conflict, which comes up. So uh, Shade wants to return to her planet. This goes wrong and... Uh, yeah, well, I won't spoil anything. Um, give it a look. It's beautiful. All right, second part of my video. Uh, this is the non-DC stuff. And I will start it with um, Planetoid Praxis, which um, is a new miniseries by Ken Gehring. Planetoid was um, released, the original one, the previous miniseries was released three to four years ago. And uh, in his afterward, he, uh, the author, talks about how a few years ago, like sci-fi and especially political sci-fi, was basically non-existent. And right now, there there are a lot of sci-fi books. And uh, he started when you know series like Saga started, and um, 
I guess it's a little bit sad that he didn't achieve the same uh, um, level of success with, with his series uh, and probably um, is a bit afraid that he will go under in this, you know, now uh, gigantic pile of sci-fi stories. Uh, but I have to say it totally stands out. It's very much uh, worth checking out. Um, I will show a little bit of the art, which I enjoyed very much. Keith Garing is doing everything. Uh, story, art, coloring, lettering. He's a renaissance man of comics. And he does a great job of introducing us to this world. Where, um, to sum it up, it's um, about a society on a, on a, on a faraway planet. Uh, which is comprised of very different races. And they all live together. And... Uh, Someone shows up, and this someone is um, is part of what I assume is their version of the Imperium, um, the bad guys, the bad guys with great weapons, and um, they have made bad experiences in the, uh, experiences in the past with uh, those oppressive Imperial guards, and now they have to decide what to do with this one guy they have found. Um, and yeah, moral questions um, are uh, discussed here and it's a great introduction, very enjoyable, uh, looking very good and I urge you to check it out. Mayday number three uh, by Alexi Campi is uh, and Tony Parker on art. So um, I was, I really liked the first issue. The second one mm, was okay. This one is very strong again. Um, it's basically about a pair of agents, of KGB agents, who are stranded in the States. They, they need to get something out of the States. A list of, um, yes, of secret identities that if it falls into, if, if this falls into the wrong hands, that of the Americans, um, a lot of identities, a lot of people are compromised in the US who work for the Russians. And, um, so it's, um, um, do you say that, cat and mouse kind of thing where the Americans try to catch the, the Russians and a lot of people are pulling strings in the background and um, it's a nice entertaining read, uh, uh, it's a thriller basically and the characters are really interesting. Um, you, you can see that a lot of research went into it um, and this would read great as a trait and uh, if you like political stories this might be something for you. Paper Girls number 11, Paper Girls is back uh, and they have new covers. Uh, you know, they used to be monochrome, now uh, they are more colorful. And uh, well, <laughs> Paper Girls, whenever I have to talk about it, I'm like, ah, I don't know, there is so much which I, in theory, don't enjoy about it, but I always love to read it. <laughs> so. Um, not much happens here. The girls are stranded yet another time in a completely new world and, you know, big monster shows up, um, some other warrior woman shows up and another woman shows up. So again, this the principle continues. Stuff is happening and you want to find out more about it. Um, it works. But there is something to it that makes it feel a little bit superficial. However, it's enjoyable, so who gives a shit? Generation Zero, number six. Um, so this started out pretty strong. It's by Valiant Comics, mm, a group of young uh, people, young guys with powers. And uh, there are some really interesting concepts um, presented in this series. But I have to say, it's kind of static and it doesn't really move from this little town and I'm, this is number six already, it will end soon, I think in two or three issues it will end and they didn't get out of this town, this little town and uh, it was only supposed to be like their first station in a longer journey, this is how I read it, but let's not forget, everything that is made in comics right now is not really paying the rent. So. They do those stories, they invest a lot of money and then they sell, I don't know, I think this sells like 5k a month or so. 
5,000 issues a month. You can't finance this kind of book for with 5,000 issues. So what I want to say is this is written for selling the rights to Hollywood. Not only them, all publishers are basically working in this in this new environment uh, only because they are able to sell rights to uh, third parties and uh, I guess this is when you have all nine issues this will read like one long story that can be made into film but it's not what I'm expecting of an ongoing um, of a superhero series which calls itself ongoing and it doesn't go anywhere it stays in one place so this this would have been maybe a nice graphic novel all right commander blood bloodshot divinity three uh, is the new kind of event um, by valiant comics um, it's maybe i should start with it because i have it here so uh, they valiant didn't get the rights to solar uh, their omnipotent hero who can manipulate atoms um, because he was a gold key property so they have been creative and they have just made up not only one but three kind of beings with this power to bend time and space and the first two uh, miniseries were a big success and a very interesting reads by Matt, written by Matt Kind uh, art by Trevor Hairstein uh, so really a great creative team and oh, the, the third uh, miniseries continues in this vein um, they imagine the Valiant universe uh, being dominated by the Russians so it's an alternative history uh, take on, um, on the Valiant universe what if it would have been the Russians um, who have um, you know who have won the Cold War in the end and um, it's it's very interesting and it's it sounds very like very much like made up but it makes sense story-wise um, because those astronauts who get those powers um, who are like gods they're all Russians and um, it's a very very good story um, I like where Matt Kind is, is going with this and they have released um, one shots with different characters from this alternate universe um, and one of them is Commander Bloodshot, who is um, working for uh, the Russian Politburo. <laughs> Looks like this. Uh, a super bad, um, badass kind of um, character. And, um, well, it's written by Jeff Lemire, but you wouldn't know it. Uh, it's what Jeff Lemire writes probably in uh, half, half an hour before bringing his kids to bed um, so it's not the greatest story ever um, but it was fun I, I got it cheaper I wouldn't have bought it uh, otherwise the art by Clayton Crane uh, he's doing this computer art who's which is super detailed but kind of looks like a computer game or something I'm not a big fan um, luckily there is another shorter story in um, the back matter and uh, it's about a new hero and this one is written by Matt Kind and drawn by Juan Jose Ripe and it's cool I really enjoyed this one maybe a little bit more so you get something out of it anyways um, next up is the spirit mm, so the Will Eisner spirit and the Darwin Cook spirit um, is pretty well known and now uh, Francesco Francavia is taking uh, up the mantle of becoming the new spirit uh, creator. So he's writing and drawing and coloring everything. And uh, it's a very nice first issue. Uh, it's a nice introduction. Um, if you know Francavia art and colors, <laughs> because he's doing a very similar color thing all, always. Um, you know what where this is going and um, it's not too spectacular the art is of course very impressive like always the story well I, I guess this will also read much better in a trade 
Uh, right now it feels like the first 20 pages of a story. Okay, so there are comics and there are Jeff Lemire comics. And um, sure, Commander Bloodshot wasn't like the best, but uh, here Black Hammer, the annual, the giant sized annual of Black Hammer, oops, uh, is fantastic. It was such a great read. Um, so Jeff Lemire really ex excels at those stories where the philosophical uh, is paired with the emotional and the, 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 the familiar. Um, and uh, add to that um, the whole history of superhero comics, you know, the different ages and the different styles and storytelling from, from, the, from the 50s, 60s up to now. And you get what is basically um, kind of an ultimate uh, story of, about superheroes. Um, not very unlike what Kurt Busiek is doing in Astro City, but Astro City stays more in a, in a, in a, in a, in a voice all the time. Um, maybe a bit closer to The Watchmen, but I don't want to compare it to The Watchmen yet because it's, we're at the seventh issue right now. But it's very complex and um, it, um, it integrates everything which is fun about superheroes um, and was fun through the ages into one big overarching thing. And uh, yes, this principle can also be applied to this annual. So we have, um, again, little glimpses into the different characters' uh, past. Um, which are united by um, an almost um, ridiculous uh, plot device, which is uh, uh, this thing here. Look at it, the red one. It's like a little monster which uh, pops up in every story and which uh, serves as, as the antagonist. And um, through this antagonistic uh, force, the hero has to show himself, the hero has to act, and the hero has to become himself or herself, the heroic persona. And um, this works really, really well. And it shows you that um, it's, it can, there are comics who can work as a plain superhero comic, which is full of sometimes just like fun and a little bit stupid action, but it's just super enjoyable. And it can also be a meta commentary on itself. And um, yeah, adding to that, that they this unites some of the nicest artists, this side of uh, spandex, um, classical spandex um, pencilers, uh, guys like Nate Powell, uh, Matt Kinn, Dustin Nguyen, Ray Fox, Amy Lennox, and Mike Allred. Um, lettering is by Todd Klein, so this is a, an all-star book and very much worth your six dollars. Next up is Moon Knight. Uh, I've talked about Moon Knight, I've did, I did a special on him. Uh, number 10 and 11 of the series, so I jumped back and forth. I read first the second arc and then afterwards the first arc and now I'm back in the third arc and well what can I say, this is just Exceptional, exceptional stuff. I love this comic. This is the best thing that Marvel is putting out. It's also the most beautiful thing Marvel is putting out. There was a page here, look at this. I mean, come on, this is so perfect. It's so, so good. And um, yeah, we get deeper into the, into the past of Mark Spector as a kid when um, you know, his mental trouble started and the different personas show up and take hold of him. And then pages like this happen uh, where you're like, what is going on? Oh, you have to turn it around. Um, what can I say? If you like psychedelic, um, philosophical, but also highly emo emotional stories, you need Jeff Lemire in your life and you need Moon Knight in your life. Uh, what you don't need in your life is Marvel doing stupid, stupid shit. 
like um, you know maybe it's just me but so I'm getting Amazing Spider-Man for a few months now yeah. regularly and um, already I'm in the in the middle of a crossover with a clone conspiracy um, event which is taking place in the Spider-Man universe and I have to buy it to understand the story in this ongoing so it, it jumps from here to there from here to there and I can't read it on its own um, and I hate this kind of shit um, add to that so if this wasn't enough uh, this is number 23 number 25 is coming up and it's a $10 single issue I mean why do they want me so badly to cancel the series I mean they achieved it uh, number 24 is the last one uh, I would have loved to read Dan Slott's continuous continuing story I, I really enjoy his writing but it's just impossible I will I will wait for the for the trade if if even that I, I, I don't know I'm still pissed because I think this is the way how you destroy your reader bases and this is a way where uh, you know your readers will feel ripped off this thing here sucks all right that's it i al almost lost my voice already so thanks for watching and see you soon bye bye